I want everyone to think about exaggeration as the top priority during the thumbnail sketch phase because this is the part where you're exploring shapes and, and taking bold risks because you're only spending a couple minutes on each sketch. Now some of you may spend a few more minutes, you may spend five, six, or seven minutes on a sketch and that's okay too, but I think as a goal it's always good to try to spend around two to three minutes uh, on each sketch because you don't want to invest too much time in any of these because you want to um, uh, be just uh, not afraid, essentially. When you spend too much time on a sketch, you tend to become more precious with it and not uh, want to take risks. Okay, and here we have some uh, sketches by Tristan Noah of uh, the artist Drake, and uh, I think they're pretty funny. I like what's going on in them. There's a couple that are pretty successful, and I like what's going on with the nose, with the head shape in general, and uh, you know, you're exploring uh, the shapes around a particular theme, they're not too diverse, so that's one area where you could improve probably is, again, exploring more different head shapes than what you did. Um, that being said, I do like your choices that you do have here, but uh, that's one area you could improve definitely is, is, is drawing more variety and trying to get even more uh, experimental in your shapes. So I'll uh, take a crack at them and see what I can come up with here. I think I'll actually try a variety of head shapes first and then I'll maybe work on the one that I like the best. Because that's another way you could go too. You don't have to always do the entire head to see if you're going to like the likeness. You could just do the initial head shape. And if you can actually see the likeness in the first head shape without any of the features, that's a really good sign. So that's one attempt there. Let's try a second one. Let's try a little different approach. I'm trying to do that exact head angle that I see with the ears. I think the ears help sell it a little bit as far as the exaggeration choices. Oh, that's funny. Okay, let's try a different take where it's narrow on top and wider at the bottom. Sometimes when people smile, it really distorts their face, uh, especially with a big, big smile like his. When the smile's so big that it pushes out beyond the boundaries of the head, I think that can be a really funny choice. So keep that in mind for smiling photos that can really work to your benefit. Okay, let's try even shorter head shape up here. Really want to press home the, re the super, super importance of, of variety and exploring multiple head shapes. Don't just get hooked on a single one that seems successful on your first attempt. You gotta just keep on pushing and try new shapes because you're never gonna know what will work until you try. Okay, so from all the ones I see, I think the one with the most potential and the funniest exaggeration is probably this one right here with the, the wide lower face. I think I like what's going on there, and I'm going to see if I can make that work. Here's cropped very close to his head, kind of just follows the contours of his skull. And I see his nose, as you did, uh, very wide at the bridge between the eyes, giving the appearance of eyes that are really far set apart. Even though they're not really that far apart, it, the illusion of them being far apart is all that really is needed for me to do that in the caricature as well. Thick eyebrows, which also is a feature you picked up on, but I think you could definitely push it further than what you did in your sketches. Very happy face. In fact, I'm going to erase the bottom lids here to make the eyes even more closed than I originally drew them. Because he's really squinting his eyes because of his big smile. You can tell it's a very natural, organic smile. He's not faking it here. Or if he is faking it, he's very good at faking it. <laughs> uh, but when we smile, we naturally sort of uh, close down our eyes. If It's a really big, happy smile. I think I made the mistake of drawing the cheek uh, nasolabial folds first, so I'm going to actually
actually draw the mouth because the mouth is what's distorting those nas nasolabial folds. And uh, I don't want to box myself in by drawing them in the wrong place. Let me draw the more important feature first of the mouth. And the mouth has a definite shape to the smile. I think in yours you just made a general smile. You didn't quite capture the shapes that are going on in his smile where the lower lip sort of uh, gets narrower at the bottom here around the lower teeth. And also there's a quite a big uh, gap where his dental arch ends and the inside of his cheeks are visible here in the, in the black shadows. Especially with a really wide smile, you want to make sure you capture this dark shadow shape. You didn't really do that in any of yours. Because uh, it really, it'll show an extremely distorted mouth. It'll show how wide it is, that it's, it's so wide that it's breaking the bounds of the skull. Now I can draw those nasal labial folds in. Lower lip here. And it doesn't have a particularly large chin, so it's not going to be large in the drawing. It's just going to kind of fall there beneath the lower lip. In fact, if it's a little bit more diminished and small, it's going to make the other features on his face look even larger. He's got some uh, heavy stubble going on here, so I'll shade in his lower face just a bit. And get those ears in there. I think this ear on the left is a little too low. Raise that up. It's not super important for the anatomy to be correct at this point, but I wanted it to be a little more correct than that to help show the angle and tilt of the head. Okay, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that one. It's a sort of a funny exaggeration and a decent likeness. I think it could definitely be pushed uh, and taken to the next level and uh, refined into a more finished caricature. So that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching my process, uh, thinking about what you guys are doing. Uh, for future critique videos, uh, just remember you're more likely to get chosen uh, the more often you post and also if you're following the rules of the assignment. Uh, some people are posting caricatures of just, you know, color finished drawings and asking for feedback and that's okay too, but they're not really following what that specific assignment was given in the last video, so they're probably not going to show up in a critique video because they're not, you know, I, I can't comment on those things that uh, I haven't discussed yet. So. Uh, always try to include your reference photo in your in your uh, posts and uh, try to post as good a quality as you can as far as the reference photo and your own drawings. If you have the ability to scan them in properly, that's always better so we can see your drawings more clearly and uh, under the, the way you originally drew them and not just some blurry photo taken under poor light. Uh, so uh, keep on working, keep on sketching, have fun. And uh, if I didn't get a chance to critique something you posted, I hope you continue to post in the future and I'll try to get around to more people. Thanks for watching and keep on drawing. If you're getting serious about caricature drawing, check out the premium course to unlock tons of exclusive content. This week, there are lots more critiques you can watch where I give different students advice on how to solve their own unique problems. Maybe you share some of their same struggles. Get the full course at proco.com slash caricature. If you enjoyed this video, share it and tell your friends. And if you want to get updates on new videos, go to proco.com and subscribe to the newsletter.